the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the, so, the communion, and the love of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, dear friends in Christ. A few kilometers away from Bilbao is a village of Pamplona. In that village, about 500 years ago, St. Ignatius of Loyola had a turning experience. Literally, his leg was shattered, and so was his dream about life. Same village two days ago on Thursday evening, the Father General of the Society of Jesus, Father Arturo Souza, gathered with some Jesuits around the world, especially for those living around there, to commemorate that experience, the beginning of the conversion, St. Ignatius of Loyola. As a college and joining other Jesuit colleges and apostolates around the world, we as a school community, we gather here this morning to begin the year-long Ignatian year to see Things are new in Christ. We pray, dear friends, for God's grace, especially that singular grace he gave to St. Ignatius, the grace of discernment, that God will give us that grace to listen to our heads and our hearts, to listen to the community of faith we belong to, and effectively to listen to him. And for us to continue the celebration of this sacred mystery, dear friends, may we call to mind our sins, asking God for pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we, who have celebrated the Paschal festivities, may by your gift hold fast to them in the way that we live our lives. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. May we sit. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When we came into Rome, Paul was allowed to stay by himself with the soldier that guarded him. After three days, he called together the local leaders of the Jews. And when they had gathered, he said to them, Brethren, though I had done nothing against the people or the customs of our fathers, yet I was delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. When they had examined me, they wished to set me at liberty because there was no reason for the death penalty in my case. But when the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar, though I had no charge to bring against my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have asked to see you and speak with you, since it is because of the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. And he lived there two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ quite openly and unhindered. The word of the Lord. Our response to the word is, the upright shall behold your face, O Lord. The upright shall behold your face, O Lord. is 
Please rise for the gospel acclamation. Spirit of truth to you, says the Lord. He will guide you into all the truth.
At that time, Peter turned and saw, following them, the disciples whom Jesus loved, who had lain close to his breast at the supper, and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. The saying spread abroad about the brethren that this disciple was not to die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he was not to die, but if it is my will that he will remain, what is that to you? This is the disciples who is bearing witness to these things and who has written these things. And we know that his testimony is true. But there are also many other things which Jesus did. Were every one of them to be written, I suppose that the world itself would not contain the books that would be written. The Gospel of the Lord. I am going to tell a story that has lasted for 500 years in few minutes. But I will begin by two imageries that may speak to us in 2021. The first imagery. What will you do with your time when you are in a hold up? Or with your time when we are all locked down or locked up because of the coronavirus? What did you do with that time? During the lockdown in the Jesuit community, we cooked. We took turns to cook. And because we are so horrible with that job, the lunch would usually happen around 2.30 or 3 p.m. Then we ate and we talked and we talked and we talked until 5 p.m. sometimes. And we waited for time. We waited for time to go. And seconds dragged on. The talk show yesterday was about what? Whether coronavirus was huh? is a scam. And so on. And the discussions, if you remember, we are around what I just said. What did we do with the time when there was a pause to anything and all the things we have planned and programmed? What are we doing with the time when there is a pause to our life? The second imagery, either at home or for the staff here and those listening at home, we have electronic devices, computers, cell phones, and so on and so forth. 
And after some time, it just drags. And we are always advised to do what? To press factory setting. Is it not? To send back the device to what? To the factory setting. And usually, if you have had the experience, you notice that you would delay as much as possible. Because factory setting, you will lose all your app and cookies. Not the cookie, the one we eat. Cookies for our settings. And we delay and we wait. But it drags on. It drags on. In essence, what we are celebrating or the beginning of the Ignatian year is to celebrate that 500 years ago, a young man, Ignatius, with his dreams in life and energy and vision and all the support from the royal family he served. There was a pause. There was a pause. God paused it. God paused Ignatius. In a way, God sent him back to factory setting. And during that experience of a cannonball shattering his legs, he just waited. He just waited. What do we do when we wait? What do we do when we wait? Throughout the year, dear friends in Christ, we shall journey with St. Ignatius and live with him and experience with him his own journey, beginning from the time God says, I am putting a pause to your life. So I suggest, dear friends, if you really want to experience this year in a very deep way, can you put a pause to your life and reset to the factory setting? The posters you see is a young man just seated with his legs, one of his legs stretched. Waiting. Waiting for what? Waiting for God to say why God put a pause to his life through this event of accident. Waiting. Waiting for the healing to take place so that God can take charge of his life and his destiny. The plans he had we are his own plans, so to say. The dreams he had, we are his own dreams, so to say. The support system around him, they were the support systems designed by those around him, so to say. By putting a pause, he's giving God the opportunity to redesign. In a way, in a way, in a way, being in a secondary school is like a pause to your youthful experience, is it not? I heard that it's now iPhone 13. Yeah, and Loyola students will not see it until further notice. And so on and so forth. To be in a school, so to say, is like to put a pause. But the pause is for God to really take over and reorient how the journey of life will be.
It's like a small laboratory handed over to God. As we say every day, prayer to know one's what? Vocation in life. And we say it every day because we will love God to help us understand the vision and the mission that he wants us as individuals to be. Fortunately for us as a college, we are also celebrating our silver jubilee this year. And we are putting a pause and asking God, where, where do you want us to go? Where do you want us? What do you want us to be? Service of God and what? And others. It has been changed. Service of God and juniors. But we ask God, what do you want us to be? Where do you want us to go? So, my dear friends, the first point of this reflection is to draw our attention that the things that seemingly put a pause to our life is actually an opportunity for God to do what? To put us in the factory mode and reprogram us and download the new and effective apps for the future. That is what... God does. We have moments of that. We call them retreats. You will have opportunities to have retreats. But it's also a moment to do what? To put a pause. We experience that every day here in the college at night when we do what? Our exam. Is it not so? And we put a pause for 10, 15 minutes and we ask God, this is where we are. Where should we be going? Therefore, dear friends, do not be afraid to be alone. Do not be afraid to be alone. Do not be afraid. Do not be scared when events in life put a pause to your life, to your future, to your destiny, in quotes. Because for the young man, St. Ignatius, that was the experience. He was trying to defend the castle in Paplona. He was trying his best. He was a trained soldier. When they told him to stop fighting, he said, no. Only cowards run away. He kept on fighting. The battle is lost. No. No. He wanted to see the end of it. God put a pause. And that pause started a history. And it is that history that we celebrate today. In the first reading, we are told that St. Paul stayed for three days. He stayed for three days. Doing what? He didn't go to Rome to rest. He went to Rome because it was necessary to defend himself before the Roman authorities. He had his legal plans and so on. No, but he waited for three days. There was a pause. At that time, we are told that was when the brethren encountered him. Encountered him. In the gospel, the same. God was taking other apostles, but God told John, you are going to stay. You are going to stay. Others have enjoyed martyrdom, but that is not my plan for you. Hold on. Hold on. There is a pause to John's life. 
He will have loved something as brave as St. Peter or something as dramatic as St. Stephen or something as fast as whatever. But God told him, no. Take a pause. Take a pause. We will have in the course of the year moments for us as a community to pause, to re-examine where we are and why we are where we are and where God wants us to go from there. For St. Ignatius, it changed everything. We are told that after the healing of the leg, he was limping. And because he still had the idea to continue with his old life, he told them to break it again so that it can be straight. And he continued limping. And in that moment of healing, we are told, and he tells us in his autobiography, God taught him as a school teacher would teach a child. That means slowly, definitively, and with love. That's my prayer for you, dear friends. Eh? That's my prayer. That you take this opportunity in Loyola Jesuit College, that you take this opportunity of encountering Jesuit education, that you take this opportunity of being a member of the Jesuit family, over 3 million students and their families around the world, that we take this year as an opportunity to pause and re-examine our ways in the light of Christ. The second and final point, and a very brief one. We are told that when St. Ignatius was recovering, he wanted to do something to pass the time. And we are told he requested for books. He requested for what? For what? For what? For books, for books. B O O K. He did not ask for movies or tablets or games. Maybe that's what was available then. But he requested for books. He requested for books. Increasingly, increasingly, we have an aversion for books. Slowly, we have an aversion for books. But I can tell you, hardly will you ask any question in the world that you don't have an element or some elements of answers somewhere in a book somewhere in a book. As a Jesuit school, we need to go back that our major focus is to study. Our major focus is to read. Our major focus is to get enlightened from studies to take a book and be nourished by the wisdom of the writer and from the wisdom of history. To take a book and ensure that we are truly, truly educated by that. I know that with short videos, short clips, and so on. We want it fast, we want it swift, we want it easy. But there is a joy in reading. It was during his studies, reading the lives of saints, that he was able to dream something different 
from what he was told and prepared for in life. Books will lead you to depth. Studies will give you new insights and perspective never imagined. Research actually gives joy. It is a lonely work, but it's a fulfilling one. Most of us, we want to be with camera. Is it not so? Is it not so? Where they are flashing cameras. Runways or runaways. I don't know what they call it. But, but imagine what St. Ignatius did by reading books. God showed him something unique about God's self and unique about himself. And as he read the lives of saints, he started the whole process of discernment, paying attention to his feelings, how he felt when he read out the lives of saints, and how he felt when he had to deal with remembering how he was going to live his vain, glorious life. In moments of solitude, God speaks to us in a way that is deep, personal, and profound. You are unique. We are unique. God will speak to our hearts in a unique and profound way. So we may be here as a group, which is nice. We learn a lot from social interaction, which is excellent. But are you listening now through books? to a deeper insight of what is happening. Depth, depth, one of the key elements of Jesuit education is cultivated by a certain calmness in your study. You take the book and you read it. One of my teachers will come to the class with some books and he will just pass it around and tell us, please touch these books. Touch them. Touch them. Behold them. So during the year we shall be reading, dear friends, we shall read about St. Ignatius. You have heard a competition. The result will be announced when we bless the Cardona Garden. But take the book, take a book about St. Ignatius. Take a book about conversion. Take a book and just quieten down and read. The end of the gospel today says that Jesus did a lot of things, but some have been written for us in a book. Sufficient, in another translation, for us to believe. There is more to books, of course, but there is a lot in a book. Pick that holy book and read. Pick the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius and read. Pick his autobiography and read. Pick his letters. He has over 8,000 letters. Profound letters. Some of them very funny. And read. Pick anything about the life of saints and read. Pick a book and read. As a school community, dear friends, we shall celebrate this year by having moments when we pause. Secondly, by reading, just as St. Ignatius read. And we pray that the whole conversion experience will be ours. We shall draw closer to him and through him to God. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
May we now stand as we offer our prayers to God. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we now bring our prayers and petitions to our God who loves us and who will always care for us. For many men and women who are inspired by the life of St. Ignatius, for many congregations and lay groups that followed Ignatian spirituality, that God will bless them and continue to lead them to him through that pathway to God. For this we pray to the Lord. For some of our students who have volunteered, who are willing to journey in a special way as an Ignatian group, that God will bless them and inspire them with his grace. For this we pray to the Lord. In the silence of your hearts, may you offer other prayers and petitions. God our Father, God of love, God of fidelity, we ask that you hear our prayers and grant us our deepest heart desires because we pray through Christ our Lord. May we sit for offertory.
pray their friends in sacrifice and mind may be acceptable to God the Father, the Almighty. May the Holy Spirit come in near, we pray, O Lord, prepare our minds for the divine sacrament, since the Spirit himself is the remission of all sins, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divine divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate his mysteries. For on the night... For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins." Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he, may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we obtain inheritance, so that we may obtain inheritance to elect. Spread with the Virgin Mother of Spread with the most of Virgin Mary, Mother of God, who blessed Joseph as spouse, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with signation of Loyola and with all the saints, always stand in station your presence with life for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Ignatius and Anselm, our bishops, the order of bishops, Chuks Afiawari, our provincial, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have gathered before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Spirit, the love of God. All oh, glory, honor be to God. Forever and ever. Amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Dear friends, behold the Lamb of God, behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. And may the body and blood of Christ give us life eternal.
we rise to conclude our prayers. Hear in your compassion our prayers, O Lord, that as we have been brought from things of the past to new mysteries, so with former ways left behind, we may be made new in holiness of mind through Christ our Lord. Before we sing the post-communion hymn, the Sushipe, I now invite people who are celebrating their birthdays today <laughs> to come. Honor Ja Christine. Obona Ikuka Ifnaya Chi. Olua Obianuju. I can't wait on Mojola. Mwogbo Kamgolibe. Onwe Buchi Kamdelechuku Jeswansi. Ezocha Amarachi Jeswansi B. And finally, our Kosyono Kamdelin Najes wants it. The thing for them on their birthdays. Let us pray for them in the silence of our hearts, asking God to, and in a special way, to give them the gift of discernment. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your sons and daughters who celebrate their birthday today. We ask you to bless them that the joy they are to their families and the joy they are to us as a school community may continue in your name. May they grow in your love and in the assurance of the care and support of all those you have given to them. Bless them now and always, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because we are celebrating a special feast today, I hear that the chaplain has a special treat for them. A special one. Thank you very much and God bless. Okay, I invite us to sit down. Sit down. Uh, the post communion hymn is the Suchipe that concludes the spiritual exercises of Saint Ignatius. And it's a special prayer that I think, and it is true, Jesuits and all those who follow Ignatian spirituality, we sing all the time because it summarizes who we are, what we desire to be, and committing everything into the hands of God. I invite all Jesuits present here to come to the altar, the choir will lead us, and I invite also other religious congregations 
men and female that are here that follow the Ignatius spirituality to come and join us at the altar as we sing the Suchipe. Jesuits and those who follow Ignatius spirituality, please come forward. We all sit down while the choir will lead us in the Suchipe.
I hope you heard me. Okay, I said, I just found out that the mic was not on. I said that from the program, immediately after mass, we have a short 15 minutes of presentation, spoken words, and after that, five to seven minutes of a drama representing what we are celebrating today. And I'm inviting the students to please proceed as we move the altar to the side. Thank you. of Leila. Ignatius of Leila was born on the 23rd of October, 1491, in the municipality of Aspecia, at the castle of Loyola. He was the youngest of 13 children. His parents' names were Don Beltran and Dona Marina. His mother died when he was age seven. As a young man, Ignatius was keen on military exercises and was driven by his desire for fame. He joined the army at 17. He strutted about with his cape flying open to reveal his tight-fitting hose and boots. Ignatius was a fancy dresser, an expert dancer, a womanizer, he was sensitive to insults. A swordsman who used his privileged status to escape prosecution for violent crimes committed. Under the Duke's leadership, Ignatius participated in many battles without injury. However, 
At the Battle of Pamplona on 20th May, 1521, the story was different. Ignatius was gravely injured when the fortress of Plampo <laughs> Ignatius was gravely injured when the fortress of Pamplona was stormed and a cannonball ricocheting off a nearby wall shattered his right leg. Ignatius was returned to Loyola. There, he underwent several surgical operations with his bones set and rebroken. In the end, the operations left his right leg shorter than the other. He would limp for the rest of his life with his military career over. While recovering from surgery, Ignatius underwent a spiritual conversion and discerned a call to the religious life. A sister brought him texts to read, De Vita Christi and the Book of Saints. These books would influence his whole life, inspiring him to devote himself to God.
Thank you very much, the drama team of St. Ignatius. On our club's day tomorrow, you will see more of them. Uh, the spoken word, uh, they were inspired from an article written by Jean-Luc Enyengue. He's a Cameroonian Jesuit, a historian. We were together sometimes in the past, and we invite them to continue with the spoken word. Thank you. Let's give them another round of applause. Many of our parents and friends have asked what the spiritual exercises is. And we got a glimpse from this short skirt of what it is about. Is God coming into our lives to do amazing things? Some students have written their names. From GSS 1B, we have six students. GSS, one, GSS 2B, 17 students. SS 1A, 16 students. SS1B, 14 students. SS2A, 20 students. SS2C, 13 students. SS2B, 8 students. GSS1C, 3 students. And SS3D, 7 students. These are the names we have received. We'll work with this group. And once the Cardonet Garden is finished, that will be a place of meeting where we'll learn how to go through the spiritual exercises. And we hope to be a place of peace and a place of hope for us. Thank you. We shall continue with the other school program as the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our mass ended. May we go in peace.